Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. Recently, my channel turned three years old, and it got me thinking, you know. Over the past three years, I've received a number of uh, review requests from people, and unfortunately, I haven't gotten to many of them, you know. There's just been way too many NECA and Super 7 toys. Uh, they've hogged all of my time, but today, well, today, I'm gonna scratch one off the list, you know? I'm gonna talk about the original 1992 movie star Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, if you asked me to make this review over the past three years, I am sorry it took this long. I already talked about these guys a few years ago when I reviewed Playmates' crappy uh, reissue six-pack, you know? At that time, I said that the six-pack was a ripoff because all four turtles reused Leonardo's body and they all had the 1988 turtle weapons instead of their unique 1992 movie star weapons. What a bunch of bull crap. I also compared that six pack to some cheap third party knockoffs um, as well as the original 1992 original figures. But I never went full in on the real deal. So here I'm finally going to do it. And I'm going to try to explain why these turtles are some of my favorite Ninja Turtles and try to explain why they felt so exciting to play with as a kid all the way back in 1992. And of course, uh, I'll talk about their accessories, where they showed up in Secret of the U's, uh, how their weapons are different from the 1988 Turtles, and more, you know. I'll try to cram in as much crap as I can. Back in the 80s and early 90s, it was really exciting to collect movie toys and watch how they progressed from year to year. Um, I can think of no better toy line than Batman, to use in this example. You know, we went from the 89 Batman, which, in all honesty, is a pretty decent likeness of Michael Keaton, but it's more of a, I don't know, it's more of a caricature or something like that, to this uh, Batman Returns Batman, which is just excellent. You know, I mean, that is a damn good Michael Keaton. Eventually, in 95, we got even better movie-accurate face sculpts, but, I mean, that's Val Kilmer. Whatever. At the time, it was neat and interesting to uh, grow and mature with the toy industry. You know, it's not like today where everything is sculpted digitally so they can, I don't know, 3D scan actors' faces and whatnot. Uh, I think new movie toys are super accurate, but we've like sort of plateaued, you know, like uh, there's no place left to improve upon for the most part. I mean, some companies still need a little bit of work. Man. Do I feel bad for that actress? Like everybody else who watched TMNT 1990, I was blown away by the amazing Jim Henson suits. They were covered in so much fine detail, and they appeared so lifelike. It was an incredible advancement in special effects and puppetry. But the Playmates toy line remained the same, you know? Smooth Ninja Turtles with lots of detail, but nothing inspired by the movie. In 1991, Seeker of the U's came out, and again, I was flabbergasted by the Turtles, and especially Toka and Razar. You know, I liked the 90 Turtles more, but I still watched that movie in awe over and over again. At first, I didn't even expect them to make movie action figures. And in all honesty, by 1992, my interest in Ninja Turtle toys had started to wane, uh, you know? Um, I think that maybe I got overloaded in 1990 and 1991 when the Turtles were everywhere. If I look at the toys from 1992 on TMNTtoys.com, I had like five of them, all right? You know, I was still playing the games and reading Archie comics. It's just my toy collecting had shifted to Spider-Man and X-Men, all right? But luckily, all of my friends still bought Ninja Turtle toys. So I still got to play with really neat action figures like Antrax. And I got to see the movie star Ninja Turtles in person. Holy crap! I was blown away by these dudes. I had to have them. The first time I saw them at one of my buddy's house, I begged and begged him, please, let me borrow two of them. And he was rich, and he had tons and tons of toys, so he agreed. Big mistake, because I am the worst borrower um, ever, because either... I always accidentally kept things or I would accidentally break them, all right? Um, it's sad. And then I would never let anybody borrow any of my things, all right? When when I got the 
the action figures off of him. You know, I love that you could remove their appendages and put them in the wrong joints. And of course, I accidentally lost his raft's leg. All right. Eventually, I found it, but I never gave it back to him because he stopped being my buddy after I moved from one school to another in the same town. Like, that was totally lame. And I swear it wasn't because of the missing leg. It was because I had went from one school to another. This right here is that leg, and I will keep it forever. I'll be buried with it. He can never have it back. Eventually, I did get myself a few of these guys. Um, I'm pretty sure that I had Leonardo and Donatello, and maybe my brother had Raphael. All I know is I never had Mikey. I don't remember how my original movie star figures met their demise. Um, I was pretty rough with my action figures as a kid. I think maybe I had dropped Leo from, I don't know, somewhere up high, maybe off a ledge or something like that, and cracked his shell. It's tough to say. But anyway, uh, these figures have always been somewhat sought after. The first time I bought a set was back in 2006. I purchased mine from Mighty Fine Stuff, which used to be a online store that specialized in Ninja Turtle toys. I believe I paid 20 a piece for them, but they really should have been $40, okay? Um, at the time, it was like 20 for the turtles and most of their accessories, and then the silver ninja stars were $10 a piece. Um, I decided not to really get any of the ninja stars, and that was foolish, you know? I wish I would have gotten them because I think now I only have like one or two. Then I got a second set uh, in 2020, right before lockdown took place, uh, somebody sold me their gigantic Ninja Turtle childhood collection that they had barely played with. And those movie star turtles were in better condition than the ones that I originally had. So I sold my um, original set of movie star Ninja Turtles uh, with a super shredder on eBay for only like 100 bucks for the whole set, which seems kind of crazy nowadays. Currently... These guys go for around $40 complete, so they haven't really gone up that much at all. If you don't have 40 bucks, don't worry, because Playmates has recently reissued the movie star figures again, uh, only this time on single cards at Target for only $10. A sweet deal, right? No. <laughs> I don't recommend them at all. Go buy the originals. Um, the you know, as I said earlier, the original movie stars all had unique bodies. The heads, uh, arms, legs, shell were all unique. The arms and legs are bendy. Um, the new Playmates reissues all have the same Leonardo body. Uh, the colors are way off, and the weapons are the 1988 Turtle weapons. So save up <laughs> and skip out on them. So now let's talk about each turtle. I'll discuss the figure itself, if it came close to copying the movie design by comparing it to the NECA action figure, and uh, then I'll discuss their accessories. The faces were sculpted to appear more realistic and more in line with the Secret of the Ooze turtles. Um, nowadays, we can see with this super realistic NECA action figure that you know, it's not as realistic as we thought, but I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, the eye bandana for one looks great, um, especially with all that extra fabric. You know, his bandana here is just flowing in the breeze. Their bodies are completely covered in a scaly texture. Even the knee pads have a texture, and so do the elbow pads. It just really helps with the realism of this action figure. Um, I do like the spots. That obviously makes it look more like the movie. You know, even Leo's got spots. Um, this NECA one. Nowadays, people try to say that the spots look like the turtles have leprosy or herpes or some shit. But, you know, at the time, I thought all of that extra painted detail made him appear movie accurate. If you look at the turtle muscle definition... Uh, I mean, they pretty much use the same kind of muscles that the original action figure had. You know, it's, you know, typical muscles, but still it's kind of done in a, in a similar style with the bicep, the tricep, the deltoid. And, um, you know, even the forearm here, like the original one doesn't have a lot of um, definition. 
and these guys barely have any definition in the forearm. The legs, they are more defined down here in the quads, although the, uh, like the shins and the calves, they're more detailed, they're sharper on the original one. The toes, however, are more defined on this uh, movie star Ninja Turtle. The shell has a lot of extra detail, and I think these cuts look more realistic, you know, like real battle damage. I mean, even the backs of the shells, these uh, shapes have shapes within the shapes, where here it's just very simple. I mean, look at the scabbards, too. Leo's scabbards here look fantastic. The original one, I mean, it's just very crude, very uh, um, simple. But yeah. This dude was, I mean, even the belt here. The belt has nice uh, realistic straps that look just like the uh, the movie. And finally, and maybe the uh, biggest selling point for me, all of the appendages are made out of like rubber, you know, instead of that hard plastic all the other action figures are made out of. Like, it's rubber, you know? So you could like crunch the arm, which just... I don't know, made it feel more realistic than your very stiff, sculpted Leonardo, you know? The legs could bend. And I don't know, because of the rubber, they move around the joints so much easier than those old action figures. Like, a lot of times the hip joints get stuck on those Ninja Turtle action figures, but this guy, I mean, look at him. Look at all this motion he's got going on. I mean, he still have a hard time balancing them on, like, one foot and stuff, but... I don't know, he just seems so free, so easy going. And one of my favorite things to do with these guys as a kid was um, you can easily pop these um, uh, arms and legs and even the head off of the joint because it's rubber. And I don't like doing it anymore because I don't want to, you know, rip the rubber accidentally. I don't know if it's going to be, uh, you know, easy to damage now that it's almost, th it's over 30 years old for goodness sake. But, I mean, as a kid, what I would use, used to do was, um, you know, I would remove the arm, remove the leg, maybe put the leg in the head joint, put the head in the leg joint, uh, maybe switch the arms around, put an arm down on the leg. You know, you had so much freedom to mix the body parts as much as you wanted to. It was cool. And, you know, I it makes me want to buy, like, a beaten up figure just to do that again. Because, like I said... These guys are in such good condition that I don't want to risk it. I know, I'm a coward, but I don't care. So now let's take a look at each Ninja Turtle individually, all right? And first up is Donatello, because we're doing this alphabetical style. Uh, for some reason, I just think Donatello looks great, you know? I love his pea soup or smushed lima bean green skin tone. I think that's great. I love the purple, you know, it's not as dark as regular Donatello, it's just, I don't know, a little lighter, he's just a little more subtle. For some reason, I don't know, I look at him and he just stands out the most to me, I don't know what it is about him, but um, he is my favorite of the four. I Like I said, I don't know why, there's just something about him, maybe it reminds me of being a kid and... Uh, uh, playing with these action figures back in the day. There's just something about them. I don't know what. Despite all my praise, there is some weird things about him. Like, first of all, it seems like all these movie star Donatello's, like his eyes are looking over to the side. It kind of drives you nuts. Like you want your your action figure to be looking straight ahead. Um, I like the expression on his face. I think it's kind of funny. Although I also kind of think he looks like he's cringing. Like he's looking to the side and it's like, eh. Um... His spots, I think they look good, but they do not look as natural as some of the other Ninja Turtle action figures in this series. His are um, very noticeable, and there's a lot on uh, his face, you know, and they are like black, and they have like this thick yellow outline around them. Um, but, you know, the shell looks good. You got some nice detailing in there, just like all the other Ninja Turtles. The back of the shell has its own unique uh, scrapes, like up here. Um, I like his belt and the holster, or the, you know, whatever is holding this uh, bow in place. A lot better than uh, two strings or whatever. 
like the uh, the original version. Um, you know, I think uh, despite him having these uh, stupid Ninja Turtle feet, like the original Donatello does, he actually stands pretty well. You know, like the original Donatello, he's he sucks at standing, you know, mine falls over all the time, but I never really have any problems with this Donatello. I think he's pretty good. Um, you know, the, uh, the finger nails, the painted fingernails and the toenails, I think also adds a little bit of uh, realism to this guy. Now, because you have no articulation in the middle of the arm, you're pretty much always stuck holding your bow like this, which, you know, isn't that bad, but the articulation works pretty well. You know, he can look all over the place. It's a ball jointed neck, just like all of them. Um, you can kind of make it look like he's, you know, getting ready to swing down on somebody's head with this bow sort of thing. Um, or I guess you could kind of make it look like he's about ready to poke somebody in the gut. Like, so even though his articulation is a little limited, um, the ball jointed shoulders, um, leave a lot of options, you know? And of course he's got ball jointed hips that, you know, rotate all around, but it's going to be a little difficult trying to get him to, I don't know, stand in different poses other than what his legs are posed to do. But in general, like I said, I love this guy. I think he's great. Real quick, in my NECA Seeker of the U's Ninja Turtle uh, review, I said that these Ninja Turtles were great. You know, they looked very faithful to how they appeared on screen. And I just wanted to show real quick, you know, some of the things that they actually uh, copied really well. You know, Playmates back in the day when they made these movie star Ninja Turtles. For one thing, uh, this purple actually is pretty similar to that... Uh, um, movie star purple. Now, obviously, the faces, they did not get the faces down, playmates. You know, even though I love the expressions on these guys, they're still like, I don't know, a little more wacky than uh, realistic. But I mean, look at the belt, you know, the way the straps go uh, down the belt and even the strap that goes over the shoulder. Um, that looks very similar. The, uh, the elbow pads are uh, more detailed and appear more like how they appeared in the film than the original uh, Ninja Turtle action figures. They're just, you know, the actual color of the Ninja Turtle instead of uh, brown, like in the movie. And the shell has a similar thing going on, you know? Um, but luckily, like I said, you got a better holster here for your bow instead of these straps. Um, but yeah, when you were a kid back in 1992, this was a pretty awesome Secret of the Ooze Donatello to have. And I think he still holds his own next to uh, this guy right here. Now on to Donatello's accessories. And first up, he has two bodacious bows. All right. Um, how are these different than the 1988 bows? Well, it's a darker color for one. It's a little thicker, and as you can see here, it's actually a little longer than the 88 bow. But that's the, that's going to be the theme here, all right? All the weapons are thicker than uh, the original 88 turtles. But yeah, you could fit that bow in his hand just fine, and then you get the second one and put it in the holster in the back. Up next, you have the Flick Fire Extinguisher. The sticker on this reads, Mutant Extinguisher. My sticker's a little messed up. Um, Donnie can hold this thing just fine, but because of the way his arms are bent to hold the bow, it looks a little funny holding it. Um, you can actually see Donatello use a fire extinguisher in the movie. During the final battle with Toka and Razar, uh, Donatello and Leonardo use fire extinguishers to reintroduce CO2 into Toka and Razar's bodies in order to speed up the anti-mutagen process. Now, this uh, fire extinguisher 
It was actually released in the series before this. Um, the 1991 action figure, Hose Him Down Dawn, included a red fire extinguisher. Right here is Donatello's Tinseltown Trash Can Shield. Um, the details on this are nice. You know, it just looks like a trash can. Nothing special. It's shiny, which is cool. A lot of brown and silver in these accessories. Uh, he could barely hold this thing. I mean, his grip doesn't grab onto it. You might want to try to wrap it around the hand to get a better grip. I don't know. It's okay. It's not... <laughs> I don't understand why all these uh, movie star Ninja Turtles got shields. They never use shields in the movie, so why did they decide all these guys have to have shields? Um... Up next are two silver ninja stars. Now these are pretty neat and they're silver and shiny. And you gotta make sure when you're looking for these that you got the actual silver movie star, silver movie star ninja stars, geez Louise. Instead of getting these gray ninja stars that were included with the 1988 foot soldiers. All right, make sure whoever you're buying off of eBay isn't trying to rip you off. Um, you know, the Ninja Turtles can sort of hold these, but you kind of got to get him to grab it a little strange. I don't know. It's a little tricky because the hand is rubber, so it wants to, you know, close in on itself. And, you know, if you just try to put it in his hand like that, you just got to try to balance it. But it's not like it's actually stuck there. And finally, here's his I Win, You Ooze canister. This is cool, you know, just like the Silver Ninja Stars, all four Ninja Turtles came with this same exact can with the same exact sticker. Now, this can was also released with Super Shredder without the sticker and a different type of gray. Um, it was released with the Movie Star Splinter with the sticker, but now it's orange. And my favorite, it was released with the... Uh, Ninja Turtle mutation action figures, but in see-through green. Very cool. Up next is Leonardo. And after Donatello, he is my second favorite in this uh, series. There's just something about him that's um, very dynamic. I think it's because he has those ball-jointed shoulders, you know? You're able to really make it look like he's ready for action. Just an overall fantastic figure. Leonardo's got a huge grin on his face, probably because he knows he's one of the greatest Leonardos of all time. Just an absolute amazing action figure. I kind of think that maybe they should have given him like a closed mouth because, I don't know, Mikey to me looks like a little psalm or something. Um, and Leonardo here looks like he's ready to party. It just would have seemed a little more appropriate if he had a closed mouth, but, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. He's still fantastic no matter what. Uh, his spots are different than Donatello's because they are like black circles with a whitish yellow outline. Um, the outlines here are thinner than uh, Donatello's. Um, just like all the other turtles, you know, his front shell is unique. You know, you got different scrapes and different spots here. Um, and then on the back of his shell, you have a large scrape, like right in the middle, one down here. Um, I think one going across here. Sometimes it's hard to tell with the different, uh, shell shapes. Um, his scabbards look amazing. You know, there's a lot of detail put into these. Certainly a lot better than the, the original scabbards. Uh, the only problem is sometimes this belt starts to fall down with the weight of these things. But that's not just him, you know. You get that with uh, Michelangelo and pretty much all the turtles, too. You can put the swords into the scabbards just fine. Although I always have a little bit of a hard time getting into this one. And to be honest with you, I don't like putting them in the scabbards because um, there is like a, like a little bit of... I guess these are bent. You know, maybe it would be different on yours. But when you put them in the scabbards, you start to get a crease in the middle of the blade and... You know, I don't want that. I want them to be nice and straight. <clears throat> I 
he can hold these swords just fine. And um, because of his articulation, you know, everything's a ball joint on him. Uh, he can be posed in pretty decent ways that make it look like he's ready to uh, slash at people or swipe at them. You know, definitely a lot better than that uh, very stiff 1988 Leonardo. My problem with the original Leonardo is you could never make it look like he was actually swinging the sword at somebody. This guy you can because his arm is, you know, it's not a 90 degree angle. It's more of a, I don't know, somewhere in the middle between 180 and 90. What, um, 135? <laughs> somewhere around there? Same thing with the other arm. The arms are, the hands are a little diagonal, but I mean, I guess that's still fine, you know. Um, <clears throat> one of the best things about Leonardo is his feet are flat, so you should have no trouble getting him to stand. I think all Ninja Turtle action figures should have flat feet. But yeah, other than that, same articulation stuff as Donatello. Ball jointed head, which is pretty good. And that's really that. Here he is next to the secret of the ooze, Leonardo. Um, and like I said, look at how serious he looks. Um, they didn't get the strap right, I guess. You know, it's going over the opposite shoulder. But you have like these little straps on the insides of the belt. That looks pretty good. Um, one of the best things is the scabbards. Like, they actually look pretty similar with the uh, the ropes going across the middle of them. The only thing is, uh, Leonardo in the first movie has these little holes on the outside of the scabbards. Where this guy, he has them on the inside of them. But other than that, like, the shell looks good. All the same crossover things that Donatello had. So now on to accessories. And first up, you have Leonardo's two on cue katana blades. These look wonderful, you know, spectacular. They look very similar to a regular 88 Leo katana. But um, the best thing about these is they are much thicker than the original. You might have a hard time seeing the thickness difference, but believe me. It makes a difference because these original katanas were very flimsy. Like you could bend them and stuff like that. These ones can bend a little bit, <laughs> but they are, like I said, they're much thicker. So they'll, they will hold their shape much better than the originals. Um, you know, of course, Leonardo can hold both of these just fine as I've showed throughout this whole video. Oh yeah. And they are darker than the, the original ones just like Donatello's weapons. You know, the original ones are more of a orange, it's like, what is that, like a sienna brown or something like that, where the uh, the movie star brown is much darker. Up next, you have the foot bopper. Now, this is just the foam bat from the movie, but you know, this is cool. Um, there's like dents and stuff like that in the foam. Um, if this was one of my foam bats from when I was a kid, it probably would have been bite marks. Because I don't know, for some reason, anything I had Nerf always ended up with teeth marks or chunks being bitten out of it. It wasn't just me either. You know, lots of people did that. The handle is nice. It looks like a turtle shell. And even down here, it still looks good. Um, there is a, a little bit on top here to, you know, screw it on and keep the foam in place. It's good. It fits in uh, Leonardo's hand just fine. He can hold it well. In the movie, though, this is not a Leonardo weapon. This is more of a Donatello weapon. Uh, as I said, it's from the movie. It's from the opening scene. Whenever uh, Donatello whacks one of those uh, crooks with this uh, foam bat. You know, for a movie that tried to be less violent than the original, I know I imitated this scene with my friends many, many a times and whacked them in the heads with foam bats. And I'm sure that I got whacked in the head plenty of times too with foam bats because Donatello did it in the movie. <laughs> Up next, you have Leonardo's movie time manhole cover shield. And, uh, you know, like I said, what's up with all the shields in this series? But this thing kind of looks like Rocksteady's shield from 1988, but it's different. For some reason, 
they not only re-sculpted this design, but they included this shield with so many other things. I think the Cheapskate had one. Rocksteady has one. Um, there was one with those... It was like a pack of accessories you could get back in the day. I think they're called like Fun and Gags or something like that. I actually used to have it. I got it whenever I got that um, uh, childhood collection that I showed in the beginning of this uh, video. But I sold it to uh, try to make up for some of the money that I had spent buying this that giant collection. I probably should have kept it though because it was like a wider shield. And you know, as a collector, you're like, I need to have all the different variants. There's even a pink one that came with the second cheap skate. But Leonardo, he can hold this just fine, but you know, the grip makes it a little strange. Maybe this, maybe it'll look better on the left hand. Yeah, okay. So now like Leonardo's like a knight. Finally, uh, Leonardo has two silver ninja stars. And he also has the I win, you ooze canister. Same as Donatello. And I probably should have showed this earlier, but, um, you know, here's the TCRI canister, TGRI canister from Secret of the Ooze that uh, NECA had released. Up next is Michelangelo, and I'll be honest with you, he is my least favorite of the four, uh, for two reasons. Mostly that kind of just plain smile on his face, and also because of this leg right here, and the, uh, the foot, you know. He falls over all the time. He has always fallen over for the past 20 years that I've had him. Um, it's a real annoyance. As I said before, Michelangelo has this, I don't know, plain smile on his face. It just doesn't capture the personality that he has in the movie, in my opinion. And it makes him look more like a, a Muppet or a, a Fraggle. The bandana just kind of, I don't know, lies on his shoulders too. It's not as exciting as the other bandanas that flow in the wind. Um, his, uh, the way his arms are sculpted can be, I don't know, I do think that they're not as good as like Leonardo's because they are crunched more so like a 90 degree angle. So it never really looks like he's actually swinging at people. The best, I mean, the way that I pose him all the time on my shelf is just holding the nunchucks like this. On the bright side, his green is closer to, I don't know, the movie star green that they have in the film. And his spots are dark and more subtle. You know, there's not a lot of them, and they kind of get lost in his skin tone a little bit. So that's good. I'm sure most people would rather that than uh, Donatello's or Leonardo's. But as I said, I'm not really bothered by it. The orange still looks good. You know, it's a nice bright orange. The belt looks uh, realistic or, you know, more detailed. And the shell here only has a few scrapes on the front. And what makes him very unique when you look at the other Ninja Turtles in this series is the back of his shell does not have any scrapes on it whatsoever. So I guess this dude is too busy uh, partying to uh, get in any major fights. I'm also not very fond of his belt. The actual holsters themselves are pretty tight. There's not a lot of space there. And I just don't really like trying to put both of the, uh, the nunchucks inside of that. You know, I just feel like it's going to, even though this has a better wire than the original one, I just don't like overstressing them. And also the, the belt falls down all the time. It slides down a lot. There's not much really to say about the lower half of his body. I mean, he's got the painted toenails just like the other guys. Same muscle mass or muscle definition. That looks good. He just has this really stupid foot. I hate this foot. It's awful. Give him two flat feet. Um, and that's really it, you know? Same. See, look at this. Like, when, as soon as you start to move the arms, they move at, like, an angle where you're just, like, covering up his face. I don't know. It's just, he seems a little crunched or something like that. Like, he's really um, trying to protect himself more than he is trying to uh, fight the bad guys. Here he is next to NECA's uh, Secret of the Ooze, Michelangelo. 
And man, that is just such a nice looking uh, Michelangelo. Like that really captures his appearance in the film. He's got a regular belt, you know. It has this extra detail to try to make it look like the movie, but it's still not the same. The holsters in the movie are on the side and really you never see the nunchucks. They're always sitting inside of them. Uh, one of the most interesting things is the original Michelangelo in the film did not have any uh, scrapes or cuts on the back of his shell. Um, just like this Playmates action figure. But yeah, you know, same thing as uh, Leonardo and Donatello. Knee pads and the uh, elbow pads all match up. And, you know, if this guy had a flat foot... I think he would have been almost perfect. Now on to accessories. And first up you have Mikey's newly released nunchakus. These are the best nunchucks that you will get in the old Playmates line. Because see that wire? You see how thick that is? Look at how thin the original wire is. Like these original nunchucks broke all the time. There are so many times where I would buy action figures from people. And the nunchucks would always be broken. But these... These look like they will last you. Um, they look very durable. I still wouldn't stress it or try to push it. As I said uh, a little bit ago, I never put them on the back of his belt. So most of the times I keep one set um, with all of my other Ninja Turtle accessories. And then I just pose him holding these nunchucks like this. If you wanted to make it look like he's actually like going after people. Um, there you go. It looks like he's like doing some kind of like trick or something like that. Like he's juggling. Whoa, 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 whoa. But just remember, because of his articulation, like he's always on route to smack himself in the face. Ooh. Up next is the celluloid sausage nunchakus, or I'm sure what you would rather call the combat cold cuts. Personally, I would call them killer kill bossy. These are taken from the opening scene of the movie, just like most of these movie star items. And Mikey uses these sausage links to scare away some crooks instead of using his normal nunchucks because you couldn't put them on the screen. Although I would say that these sausage links just look like nunchucks anyways. Like you're kind of like tricking the censorship people into letting European kids see some type of nunchuck substitute. I like the sculpt of this thing. I think it looks pretty good. You know how you have the links and then the little um, pieces connecting them. I especially like how there's uh, some teeth marks right here as he's, I'm sure, eating these things and beating people with them at the same time. Um, these are different than the sausage nunchakus that were included with Talking Michelangelo. These obviously are way better. And Mikey can hold this just fine, but it looks, it looks hilarious. Let's see. See, every time I, like, move them, the, sh the stupid belt falls down. Got to make those bite marks to the mouth. <laughs> Next, you have the Lost Picture Pizza Box Shield. This picture baffles me, all right? Because it looks like everyone's coming to the drive-in theater to watch Raph make out with himself, you know? Um, there is a bow on the top of this one turtle head. And I guess that looks a little more pink than it does red. But seriously, it's... It's very close to red. It's more of a magenta, but let's be honest. If there was a turtle that was going to be in love with himself, it, it would probably be Raph. The back of this thing just has the handle. You know, nothing special. It does look like there's some pizza oozing out from the top here. And Mikey can hold it. Both hands. Although, it, he never holds it where it's actually, like, straight. And finally, Mikey comes with two silver movie star ninja stars and one I win, you ooze canister. Now, finally, we have Raph. And I'll be honest, for some reason, Raph doesn't stand out to me as much as Donatello and Leonardo. And he doesn't annoy me as much as Michelangelo. So Raph to me is just sort of in the middle. I will say that just like Michelangelo, this one leg right here, even though he has two flat feet, which helps, this leg has to extend really far back behind him in order to get him to stand. And 
that can be a little annoying, but he, he at least doesn't fall over as much as Michelangelo does. I like Raph's expression. He's kind of got like this sassy smirk on his face. I think it fits his personality pretty well. His green's kind of a weird green. Like, I don't even know what you would call it. Is it like a mint? Is it like a meridian green? I don't know, but it's it's definitely um, unusual, I think, compared to the other three. Uh, his spots, though, are like subtle. Again, like Michelangelo's, which is pretty nice. His are like a dark, almost black, and there's like a, a, a light gray or a faint gray um, outline. So it, it mixes well with his uh, skin tone. He's, uh, it looks like he's got more battle damage on the front of his shell here, probably because he's the, the scrapper of the bunch. On the back, he's got some pretty big scrapes too. One right here, one right there, one right there, one right there. Again, his pelt's falling down. He's got these like cool little ropes going across here. I think he's the only one that has that in the back there. You have the like connector pieces to connect to the side holsters. You can put the size in his belt very easily. And um, I like either posing him with the size or without. The only problem is uh, if you leave it like this over time, the size will eventually start to bend because the legs sort of get in the way. I think uh, his hands are sculpted pretty well. And um, even though you can't get like a nice stabbing with these hands, you could still get like sort of like threatening poses with him, like he's pointing at people. Like, hey, if you don't get out of here, I'm gonna perform an unnecessary tracheotomy. As I said before, his stance is a little strange and that leg just really sticks out to the side. I also think that um, after all these years of him standing on my shelf, it starts to, I don't know, wear down a little bit. You know, it's not as well supported as the other legs. It starts to dip and bend. But as I said, still not as annoying as Mikey. His articulation works out okay for him, you know. Same head articulation as the other guys. Uh, he does whack himself in the face with his sigh. But you can, I don't know, you can still make it look like he's going to people. Whack. Maybe he'll stab them. <laughs> That's not good. Um, and, you know, of course, the same leg articulation as the other guys. Here he is next to NECA's Secret of the Ooze, Raphael. And look at that. Even this Raphael has kind of like this weird smirk on his face. Um, the holsters for the size sort of have the same, I don't know, I guess this has like rivets instead of actually like a, like some rope like this has. And, um, if you remember from my review, I did say that if you watch the Secret of the U's movie, Raphael has the most scrapes on the back of his shell. So it would make sense that he's got a lot on his back too. Raphael just looks like a fantastic version of Secret of the Ooze. And as a kid, I was happy to uh, be able to play with him. So first up for accessories, you have Raph's silver screen size. Um, just like all the other weapons, they're pretty much the exact same as the 88 weapons, except they are darker and they're made of a more thicker plastic. I mean, look at this. A lot of the 88 weapons too, they have like little nubs on them from where they connected to the, the weapons rack, but these are all nice and clean. And like I said, because it's thick, it's not very flimsy. And they both fit in his hand extremely well. Right here is the Yuck Yuck Yo-Yo. And as you can see, the both yo-yos here have like a, a turtle shell design. Um, I actually didn't know what this was for a while. I used to think it was like some kind of uh, bola snare or something but then when somebody pointed out to me oh yeah that's the yo-yo I was like oh shit that makes perfect sense um you can see Raph here holding this but it's kind of heavy so it's kind of tipping out of his hand there it's not much of a Raphael weapon anyway now I'm sure you probably know where this appeared in the film but in case you've never seen Secret of the Ooze 
Um, Mikey used this yo-yo in the beginning, the opening scene, whenever he was fighting against this large group of crooks. He smacked them all in the face with this yo-yo. Another thing that I tried to do as a kid all the time with my friends for fun. I don't think I ever hit anybody with a yo-yo, though, luckily. <laughs> that seems like something that, you know, yo-yos were pretty hard, you know. I would imagine if you hit one of your friends in the face, their mom would definitely be calling your mom. Up next, you have Raph's Tinseltown Turtle Shell Shield. What a weird item. You know, it looks like a turtle shell, but it's covered in, I don't know, it looks like garbage. It doesn't look like a... Like, if you were trying to run around and be like, hey, everybody, I'm a Ninja Turtle, check out this shield. They'd be like, what the hell's on it? It looks like there's gunk and um, plates and, I don't know, very strange design. I mean, he can hold it well, but I still don't understand why they gave all the turtles shields. It's weird. And finally, and I know you're probably sick of it already, but uh, Raphael came with two silver ninja stars and he also came with the i win you ooze canister if you want more movie action figures to pose with your movie star ninja turtles well you're in luck because uh playmates in the year 1992 also released a movie star splinter and he is pretty awesome he's flocked uh he's got a very nice um i don't know kimono that he wears i like that they also released a foot soldier, but I don't have it, much to my shame. The year before, 1991, the same year The Secret of the U's came out, they released Toka and Razar. Also, 1991, Super Shredder came out, and, I mean, he is an imposing figure with all those spikes and everything. And they never released April from Secret of the U's, but you can get an April from Turtles 3. And they have never released a, a Casey Jones action figure from... Uh, the first movie, but you can get Casey Jones's uh, ancestor, Wilt, and he comes with a hockey mask. I thought it was going to fall over. Not only that, but uh, let's take a look at, you know, Secret of the U's movie star Michelangelo next to um, the Turtles 3 Michelangelo. So I should begin this by saying that other than the, the four Ninja Turtles, that April and the Wilt that I show, there is like a whole line of action figures from Ninja Turtles 3, including, uh, you know, some of the side characters and um, I'm not sure of vehicles, but I know they're a catapult came with Wilt. Um, but I don't have many of them because I've never been too fond of Turtles 3, so I've always just kind of skipped those toys. I just kind of got this recently. I will try to collect the other three Ninja Turtles, but, you know, just by comparing this guy to this guy, like, the movie star Michelangelo is just so much better, you know? He just looks so, I don't know, detailed compared to this guy. And you're, I know you might be thinking, well, there's tons of detail on this guy. But just the way his textured body looks and the spots and everything like that and all the etching in the shell um, and the painted nails and all that kind of stuff, it just makes him look a little extra or something. This guy... Even though he has all this cool armor on his body, it's all just flat paint, you know? Even his fingernails and his toenails aren't painted. Um, he just looks comparable with the regular Ninja Turtle action figures. You know, nothing too special. If you look at his uh, face... Like, the face is all textured, and like, there's no texture on the fingers or the toes or anything. But the face is all textured, and he does have the spots. But the head is, I don't know, like a little shrunken. I like the big grin for Michelangelo, but I don't know. This guy just cannot be beat. And finally, real quick, here is just a little comparison of uh, Ninja Turtle movie toys throughout the years. Unfortunately, I don't have... Um, a regular 2007 Michelangelo action figure. I actually used to have like the whole standard series of that, um, but I sold them years ago, unfortunately. I should have kept them, but I had no idea that I would ever be making YouTube videos. Um, yeah, you know, that one's awesome. That one's pretty good. This guy, the standard ones are better. <laughs> I do not like the, uh, the, uh, those newer live-action movie Ninja Turtles. And even though I haven't seen the Mutant Mayhem movie yet, I think those toys actually look kind of cool. You know, I think they look appealing. I plan on watching the movie. 
I just haven't done it yet. But I think that guy looks neat and the other toys look cool. And for only $10 a pop, you know, I could not say no to this pretty neat looking Michelangelo. And that's it. I hope in this video I made a good argument as to why I think these movie star Ninja Turtles are some of the best Ninja Turtle toys ever made. You know, sure, they lack articulation and uh, screen accurate faces, but they make such a striking impression. Like, I couldn't imagine my Ninja Turtle collection without these guys. If you have some great memories with these dudes, share them in the comments, you know? It may take me a bit to get back to you, but I will try as hard as I can to eventually get back to you. So, thanks for watching, have a good one, and talk to you later.